Ray Gowers is a grain grower in the Sunraysia region near Mildura. At the minute this paddock's going into wheat, but it has been vetch in the past, it has been lentils, lupins. Next door, across a windbreak of trees, is a citrus orchard managed by Tommy Braybrook. Uh, as you can see, we, we grow citrus, um, many different varieties throughout the season. While the farms produce vastly different crops, one thing they have in common is weeds. And both growers are participating in a project which is busting down borders, bringing neighbours together to tackle weeds. Called Area-Wide Weed Management for Cropping Systems Weeds, the project is supported through funding from the Australian Government Department of Agriculture, Fisheries and Forestry as part of its Rural R&D for Profit program. There's additional Grains Research and Development and Cotton Research and Development Corporation investment. And there are collaborations with a range of other organisations, from local farm groups to universities. Yeah, this project's a really interesting one because it's bringing together not just one sector but multiple sectors. We've got grains, we've got cotton, we've got horticulture, wine. Coming together along with the federal government funding is bring us all together to look at mobile weeds. And these are the weeds that spread across boundaries, including public land. Group leader Dr Rick Llewellyn says the project is looking at a range of problem weeds and is focused on three pilot regions. The Sunraysia, the Darling Downs and the Murrumbidgee Irrigation Area. In the Darling Downs, we've got the Toowoomba Regional Council involved, and that's looking at roadside weed management and what can be done on those roadsides to suppress the weeds that are important. Because up there, you've got you've got cropping farms that are trying to maintain bare fallows, and then you've got weeds growing on the roadside. So in the Murrumbidgee, in the irrigation area there, there's the, the channel banks, because you've got a lot of movement of channel water between an incredibly diverse range of farms, cotton, grains, horticulture, viticulture and you're trying to manage that movement and the weed seed set that might happen on the channel banks. In Sunraysia, where grain farms are adjacent to horticulture, reducing off-target damage while maintaining weed control is key. Michael Moody is the research agronomist conducting trials here in conjunction with Mallee Sustainable Farming. Flaxleaf fleabane is a problem summer weed. It's particularly a problem in horticulture, um, but it's also becoming an increasing problem in, um, in the dryland sector um, as we've moved away from cultivation practices uh, into more chemical control practices over the last 20 years. Michael's been testing a double knock strategy, spraying with the systemic herbicide glyphosate, following up later with a contact herbicide such as Paraquat. We took a section of the paddock and we sprayed um, a range of, I think there was about 11 different treatments um, that we sprayed back in uh, about December last year, looking at that double knock um, strategy. So it was a replicated trial which we um, actually sp sprayed with this boom, which was a 14 metre passes um, going across the paddock, so it covered quite a significant area. If the plants were small enough, and uh, when I mean small, probably around about ankle high, um, we're able to get a complete kill on those plants with the double knock um, treatment. But the problem was um, most of the plants were actually um, uh, quite a bit bigger than that. Mature fleabane is difficult to control with herbicide and the fluffy seed heads are extremely mobile. So Tommy, this is probably an example of one of the, uh, the better treatments in the trial. Yep. It's a double knock treatment. Yep. So the two in combination, it's like a one-two punch, yep. working synergistically uh, with, with each other. Good yeah, so here we've been able to pull down pretty, uh, yeah, quite a big fleabane plant yeah. um, there. Michael Moody has been working with orchard manager Tommy Braybrook to reduce fleabane, benefiting the citrus grower's bottom line and that of his grain producing neighbour. Over on this row over here, this is our untreated, yep. so basically if we hadn't touched the weeds, this is what they'd be looking like now. Yeah, yeah, a mess. Obviously a bit of a mess for you, not only competing, robbing yourself of water and nutrients, but also that biosecurity risk. Tall sort of weeds growing up in the canopy, yeah. um, potential for insects. Yep. You can see here, fleabane, going to seed, and that's just millions of problems yeah. in the future. 
I think the biggest thing is um, weed resistance. So um, the chemicals that the citrus uh, guys use to what we use are slightly different. So they're using um, different rates and different uh, chemicals to what we are. So um, our biggest concern on this side would could potentially be resistant weeds coming across the fence. It works the other way around too. Broadacre farmers have to be careful with spraying so as to not adversely impact horticulture. We don't want to damage any of their crops, so uh, we always hit this paddock and we always strategize when we uh, target this paddock based on the wind. Uh, is our, I mean, if that means spraying this paddock in over two or three separate days, do we'll, we'll do that. Um, we're very conscious about uh, damage any of their produce over there, so um, we treat this farm a little bit different to the rest of our other farms based on just that fence line just there. And I think the example we've had here with Tommy and Clay has been exceptional in that you know, they both talk, they both discuss what's happening in terms of their weed management and it just really goes to show what can be done when people work together. As Acting Executive Officer of Mallee Sustainable Farming, Tanya Morgan has been involved in extension in the Sunraysia district, bringing the various farm groups together. So far we've run events with the different industry groups. It's been hard to get them together because they spray at different times. So the stuff we've focused on in Broadacre has really been about summer spraying and avoiding off-target damage when they're spraying next to sensitive crops. In horticultural situation, we're really focused on using the right chemicals, making sure they get a better result when they're actually spraying. Tommy Braybrook says the feedback from Michael Moody's trials will change the way his business tackles orchard weeds, which is a really good outcome because detailed GPS weed mapping across Sunraysia reveals a higher density of herbicide resistance around horticulture. So over the last few years we've randomly collected a range of plant populations and had those populations tested for herbicide resistance um, at a wider scale. So not just picking dry land paddocks but picking horticulture, picking dry land, picking roadsides and, and other spots where fleabane is, is present um, within the district. The data from Sunraysia and the other two pilot regions is being loaded into software which forms maps of herbicide resistance. Already there's 15 to 40 percent of um, fleabane populations that are, that are resistant to glyphosate uh, already within this region. Those populations around the horticulture area tend to be closer to say 40 percent. Um, the populations coming out of the um, dry land area tend to be closer to 15 percent. With the area-wide weed management program to finish in 2023, the data so far underlines a need for collaboration between the land users. There's achievements at a couple of different levels. I mean, getting this understanding of the amount of mobility is a big step because it hasn't really been done in such a scale before. But at the other level, at the sort of extension and, and farmer engagement side of things, what we've seen is some real highlights where you've got the horticulture or vineyard sector coming together with the grain sector on some of these things. But it highlights how much potential there is for more of it. I think it's just about cross-sharing information and being able to say, oh, well, you can actually use these chemicals that are actually going to target them better and you won't get resistance down the track. They might not care about resistance, but we do. So I think it's, um, it's like a friendly partnership across the neighbour fence. Giving weeds the flick is in everyone's best interests.